And we're starting off with AEW as two of their top stars are officially out of the upcoming Blood and Guts match on July 19th. Brian Danielson won't be able to participate due to a broken arm, representing the Blackpool Combat Club. Eddie Kingston, who previously aligned with the Elite during the feud, will be busy with NJPW's G1 Climax 33 instead. The match is set to be a 5-on-5 showdown, with four members of each team already confirmed. The BCC will be represented by John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, Claudio Castagnoli, and Kenosuke Takeshita. The Elite's lineup currently consists of Adam Page, The Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. The remaining members of each team will be announced in the upcoming weeks. In a later segment, Chris Jericho hinted at a revitalization and potentially a new character iteration. Don Callis approached him and offered him a spot in the Don Callis family, which could imply Jericho's involvement in Blood and Guts, since Takeshita is a member of the same family. Jericho responded with a captivating, maybe, sparking a reaction from Daniel Garcia of the Jericho Appreciation Society in a backstage interview. While Jericho has participated in both previous Blood and Guts matches, we'll have to wait and see which team he ultimately sides with this year. During tonight's AEW Dynamite, an exciting vignette introduced a new signee to fans. Nick Wayne, a talented independent wrestling star who is still under 18, was showcased alongside Darby Allin. Although Wayne didn't make an appearance in the vignette, Allen reflected on their connection at the Buddy Wayne Wrestling Academy. Allen recalled how Wayne, as a young child, would hang around the ring while he trained. When the elder Wayne suddenly passed away, Darby felt compelled to watch out for Nick. He recommended Tony Khan to check out Wayne's work, and at just 16 years old, Wayne was offered a future contract with AEW. Interestingly, it was announced during AEW Dynamite that Nick Wayne's match against Swerve Strickland is scheduled for next week, coinciding with Wayne's upcoming 18th birthday on July 10th. WWE News Now as their chief content officer Triple H, who holds the reins of the company's creative direction, was missing from last week's WWE Raw, according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select. Fightful Select has learned that WWE's chief content officer Paul Triple H Levesque was not at the past week's WWE Raw. Several people backstage at Raw noted to us that they hadn't expected Triple H's absence, but that he was in a great mood Saturday for WWE Money in the Bank and excited for the success of the show. Those we spoke to claimed there was nothing to it and just a planned night away. Triple H is expected to return this weekend for SmackDown. Talent weren't told why he wasn't there. It was further noted that Vince McMahon was not present and Bruce Prichard ran the show in Triple H's place on Monday, as is usually the case when he can't make a show. WWE has announced that SummerSlam 2023 is set to take place at Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan on August 5th. Following recent patterns, we can anticipate some major returns at the event, considering the notable comebacks we witnessed at the past three SummerSlam events. Roman Reigns in 2020, Brock Lesnar in 2021, and the trio of Bayley, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky last year. Three WWE superstars who are out with injuries and ready for a return on August 5th are Randy Orton, Big E, and Kofi Kingston. There's also a slim possibility of Bray Wyatt returning too. So which WWE superstar are you most excited for a return? Sound off in the comments below. Drew McIntyre made his long-awaited return to WWE back at the Money in the Bank Premium Live event in London last Saturday. In a surprising turn of events, McIntyre made a comeback to confront Intercontinental Champion Gunther after his title defense against Matt Riddle. This appearance marked Drew's first since WrestleMania 39 and stirred up speculations about his future with the company. Despite his return at Money in the Bank, reports indicate that Drew has not signed a contract extension yet, and his current deal is set to expire in early 2024. During an appearance on WWE's The Bump, Drew was asked if he had any words for the fans after being away for three months. He took the opportunity to apologize for missing dates and emphasized that the present is what truly matters, and that he is fully back in the present. He said, I just want to apologize for everybody that I missed my dates. I missed the towns. It's not like me unless there's a reason. Obviously, the rumor and innuendo is out there. What's going on with Drew McIntyre? What's going on with the future? The future doesn't matter. What matters is the present, and presently, Drew McIntyre is back. If you're heading to a WWE show and Drew McIntyre's there, you know you're going to get 110%. And finally, I'm chasing that big moment with a title in front of live fans. So let's make that happen. Finally. Drew is seemingly set for an Intercontinental Championship clash with Gunther for the title, potentially at SummerSlam in Detroit. 
Back to AEW now, as Saturday marked the third episode of AEW Collision, the first not to air live, and the only episode currently announced to not be as well. It was recorded two days earlier so AEW could run back-to-back -back nights in Hamilton, Ontario. It was also the first episode to not include CM Punk wrestling in a match, as he did commentary on the Samoa Joe vs. Roderick Strong main event instead. With that in mind, how did the show do? According to WrestleNomics on their Twitter and Patreon pages, the July 1st collision averaged 452,000 viewers across its two hours, down 24% from the previous week, approximately 172,000 of which were in the key demo, most valued by advertisers, adults aged 18 to 49, down 37% from the week prior. The latter figure translates to a 0.13 rating in 18 to 49, no ranking information is available publicly as of this writing to determine how Collision did relative to other cable shows that aired on Saturday. Both the total audience and 18-49 to 49 figures, though, were about the same as what AEW Rampage did the night before. Back to AEW, as Adam Cole and AEW World Champion Maxwell Jacob Friedman advanced to the next round of the Blind Eliminator Tag Team Tournament and on Cole's birthday to boot. The pair faced off against Daddy Magic Matt Menard and The Butcher on Wednesday Night's Dynamite, who were paired earlier in the day. MJF and Cole's tag team victory was topped off with the AEW champion surprising Cole with some over-the-top birthday festivities and a seemingly sincere thank you from Cole. Their pairing in the Blind Eliminator Tournament has thrown a wrench into the ongoing storyline between MJF and Cole, which started with a heated promo and carried on into Cole wrestling the AEW champion to a time limit draw in a championship eliminator match. Since then, MJF has been laying it on thick with Cole after they were paired together for the tournament. MJF has had something of a busy run on AEW programming lately. He defended his title at AEW X New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door and proceeded to defend it once again on AEW Collision against Ethan Page. The AEW World Champion also made his first appearance on Rampage two weeks ago. And we're ending today with John Cena as the 16-time WWE World Champion has shared a video of himself speaking with WWE Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley backstage. Cena made a surprise return at Money in the Bank 2023 to create buzz about the possibility of a future WrestleMania in London. Before Cena left the UK, he had a conversation with a major star backstage. Cena has now shared a video on TikTok of him and Rhea Ripley talking backstage. The camera was far away so you can't hear what's being said, but the video ends with Ripley walking off and Cena staring directly into the camera. Fans have been buzzing with speculation about the nature of their conversation. Many believe that John expressed his appreciation for her work and offered some worldly advice on the business. Some playful predictions range from a potential alliance with the Judgment Day to a potential love affair.